What is going on, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global here back with another video. And in this one, I want to kind of rank and just look at the Patriots quarterback options for the 2021 draft. Now, there are very few guys that I feel the Patriots should draft that are actually worth it. I'm not going to go through every single quarterback and rank them. Um, I'm just kind of going to go through which guys I think the Patriots could draft, which guys I think will make an impact, but kind of listing from the guys I want to see them draft the most to the guys I don't want to see them draft as much. With that being said, this video is going to be realistic, okay? I'm not going to include anyone, like I said, that I don't feel is going to make a genuine impact or is really going to help necessarily come in or even have that potential to be the future. And I'm not going to list guys like Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, because clearly the Patriots have no chance at getting them. Now, number one on this list is going to be Justin Fields. Now, if the Patriots can get Justin Fields past number three, because that's where the 49ers are, we know they're going to select a quarterback, then it's a no-brainer to me. You know, if the Patriots have to trade up to number four or whatnot, I'm selecting Justin Fields. He's my number one realistic quarterback for the Patriots to go after. If the Patriots can get Justin Fields, then it's just a clear and cut sign that the dynasty is just going to continue. He's graded really, really well over the last few seasons. He also hasn't like opted out or, or whatnot in 2020, which I do put value into. I do understand why players did so, but nonetheless, you know, you do have question marks for, for not playing football for an entire year. But Justin Fields had a 2020 grade of 93.6, a 2019 grade of 91.5, and a 2018 grade of 90.1. Justin Fields is going to be super, super dynamic for the Patriots. You know, whether you're somebody who wants a pocket passer, <clears throat> excuse me, or you're someone who wants a mobile quarterback, Justin Fields is going to bring that to you. And my favorite thing about Justin Fields is while he can be mobile, he doesn't rely on that. He's a pass first quarterback, but uses the option of getting outside the pocket and picking up yards with his feet when it's not there. He's also a big guy, 6'3", 228 pounds, ran a 4'4", 40 yard dash. He's also somebody that takes care of the football very, very well. Six interceptions on 22 touchdowns in 2020 with a passer rating of 120.4. 2019, he had three interceptions on 41 touchdowns with a passer rating of 131. 2018, zero interceptions on four touchdowns with a passer rating of 129.2. He's also very consistent. That's the big thing, too. And what I always say is there's two most important things in football, consistency and availability. And that's what Justin Fields is going to bring. He's also consistent as a thrower. PFF grade him a, <clears throat> excuse me again, guys, I'm sorry, a 92.2 grade passing grade. They gave him a 94.5 intermediate passing grade. And then they gave him a deep grade of 96.5. So really, really good down the field also, but also very good and accurate within the short to intermediate routes. PFF says that his best strength is his accuracy and his biggest weakness is his processing speed. They also said that he has, uh, that he has ever been anything other than deadly accurate during his time in college. The biggest knock on Justin Fields is going to be how he does under pressure. Not a good uh, you know, quarterback once pressure's up in his face, once he's getting blitzed. But at the same time, the Pages have a good offensive line. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, throughout a few years, they can kind of teach and they can iron out. So easily hands down, Justin Fields is my number one quarterback on this list. The, the number one important thing for me is a quarterback that can be accurate with the football. I can't tell you how many fights I've gotten into with people who said, well, you know, man, it's a uh, it's a run first league at this point. If your quarterback can't be mobile, you're going to fail. And that's not anything farther from the truth. Now, with today's league, teams do prefer their quarterback to have a sense of mobility, but nobody is expecting them to be a Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, anything like that. And while, yes, maybe the classic pocket-passing quarterback is not as in the league as it once was, it is still a pass-first league. If you cannot be accurate with the football, you're going to fail. It doesn't matter how, how much you can run, how dynamic you are as a mobile quarterback, you're not going to get too far. Example, Lamar Jackson. While he is a good quarterback, he's not a great passing quarterback. And that inconsistency as a passing quarterback has definitely not helped the Baltimore Ravens. 
in the end, let's say you are down by five points in a game. Fourth quarter, 30 seconds left, you're at the 35-yard line. You're not going to win that game by your quarterback getting outside the pocket and trying to pick up that yardage, trying to pick up that touchdown as a mobile quarterback. You need someone who can rely with a good arm and good accuracy down the field if you want any chance in winning that game. And I say this because of who I'm going to navigate in to my next option, and that's Mac Jones. Now, for those of you who are going to comment some crap or are going to say, I'm going to leave the channel, don't threaten it. If you don't agree, then just leave. But it makes sense for the Patriots, okay? And it makes sense for me to have the Patriots over Trey Lance, which, spoiler alert, he's my number three guy, so it's not like he's far off. But Mac Jones makes more sense for the Patriots than a Trey Lance. Mac Jones was actually the best quarterback this past season with a grade of 95.8. Obviously, that's elite. And then a grade in 2019 of 78.7. Mac Jones, just in general, is super controversial just because it's either you love him or you hate him. And it is super, super difficult to project where exactly he's going to go into the draft. But I will say this. There are reasons why... It's being said that the 49ers are projected to draft him with the third overall pick. That's not just being said for crap. Now, Mac Jones is a guy who definitely would fit the Patriots system very, very well. The big reason that people want to knock on him is because he's not a mobile guy. Now, I'm not worried about that because I genuinely don't care if he's mobile or not. For me, pocket awareness. Can you maneuver in the pocket? Can you shake off some blocks? Can you avoid some sacks? Can you extend plays? That's a different thing than being able to be a mobile quarterback. And while he is more mobile than Tom Brady, he's definitely not considered a mobile quarterback, but he's very, very good in the pocket, very, very good pocket awareness, can uh, you know maneuver through the pocket, can shake off sacks, can you know get outside the numbers. And to me, if you can have that, then I'm okay with you not being mobile. Because in the end, again, what does it come down to for me? It comes down to, can you be an actual passing quarterback? Can you be accurate? And Mac Jones is one of the, is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in this entire draft class. Not to mention, he's another guy who takes care of the football extremely, extremely well, which is very, very, very important, especially to Bill Belichick. 2020, he was averaging 11.1 yards per per attempt. He threw 41 touchdowns uh, with four interceptions, 141.6 passer rating. In 2019, 14 touchdowns with three interceptions with a passer rating of 128.1 and was averaging 10.7 yards, I'm sorry, per attempt. Good sized quarterback, six foot three, 214 pounds. Definitely a size that can translate into the league. Uh, obviously, I think part of the reason he's not so mobile and is a little bit more slow and sluggish is because of that weight. But again, I don't think it's necessarily something that is going to you know, prevent him from being successful into the NFL. In my opinion, I think because he's not so mobile, it's going to kind of depend on where he goes, what team he goes. Because if he goes to a good team, it's going to be boom or bust. And if he goes to a team like, you know, last year's Jets, then he's going to struggle a little bit more. That's what I feel with passing or not passing, but mobile quarterbacks is that they can go more so to any team and have a higher, you know, chance at looking better just because they can kind of scramble outside and extend plays. And of course, if you're a team that doesn't have good receivers, doesn't have a good offensive line, then you can kind of just run all over the field and still pick up yardage. But I'm telling you, if he goes to a team like the Patriots, like the 49ers, let's say, you know, so the Colts in there for fun. If he goes to a team who has a good offensive line and has actual weapons, then yeah, he's going to be a very, very, very good quarterback in this league. And I think a lot of people are going to say, well, Patriots global, you know, he, any, any quarterback with a good offensive line and, and, you know, decent weapons is going to do good. And that's not true at all. 
You still have to make good decisions. You still have to be able to read a defense and you have to be accurate and you have to place the football where it needs to go, which is extremely difficult for some quarterbacks. Example, Cam Newton in 2020. It's important for a guy like Mac Jones to have a decent offensive line to keep him protected so he has longer to make the reads and put the ball where it needs to go versus a mobile quarterback who would just take off with his legs. You also don't have to worry about is he going to translate to NFL competition because he operated in one of the most dynamic offenses and dominant offenses in college football history. His football IQ is off the charts. He is a super, super smart guy, and he knows how to run an offense. He is also somebody unlike, let's say, a Justin Fields, who once pressure comes his way, once he's getting blitzed, he doesn't freak out. He doesn't you know, cause turnovers. He's very, very calm in the pocket once blitz shows. A lot of people are going to question whether he was successful or you know, it was Waddle, Smith, and Najee Harris, but to that I will say, well, of course they helped him, he also helped them, and this is something that they even said themselves. It doesn't matter how good your receivers are if your quarterback cannot lead you, if your quarterback cannot place the ball where it needs to go, and even if you're concerned that that, you know, him him playing with these, these top-notch college football players is going to be an issue as he enters the NFL, if the Patriots drafted him, he'd be playing again with some of the best in the league. The Patriots have two top tight ends now, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, and I only see them adding more pieces, not to mention a dynamic run game that he can, you know, rely on also. So Mac Jones, definitely not my number one option, but he is my number two. Now, next up on my list, you already know, is going to be Trey Lance. And again, a lot of people are probably going to get on me for this, but again, I just think it makes a ton of sense. Honestly, you don't know what version of Trey Lance you're going to get. In 2019, he played elite. He had a 90.7 grade, so just around that elite mark in 2019. 2020, this past season, had just 78 overall grade. 2018, 70 overall grade. He's also going to be somebody, though, who comes from a football team in North Dakota State that didn't go up against much competition. He's a very, very small college quarterback, so there is some concerns on how is he going to translate into NFL competition. Then, you also have to mix in the fact that there's not much tape on Trey Lance, okay? Trey Lance, since 2018, has played in a combined 18 total games. He played in one game in 2020, 16 in 2019, and one in 2018. Honestly, maybe if Trey Lance played more games, he could have beaten out Mac Jones on my list, but there's just too many question marks and too many concerns with Trey Lance for me personally that I have him comfortably taking that number two role. They literally have him listed for his NFL comparison to Taysom Hill with actual arm talent. PFF said that Lance is a rare physical specimen at the position and that he could do damage in a quarterback run play action heavy attack. They say his biggest strength is his physical tools. Biggest weakness is his accuracy. Now, I will say Trey Lance has very, very good um, arm or not arm power, but throwing power. Rather, the ball explodes down the field. But that doesn't matter if you can't be accurate with the football. And hey, sometimes you can teach accuracy, sometimes you can't. He's also someone that took care of the ball pretty well, uh, made very few bad decisions, but again, in just very limited tape. And he's somebody that does want to attack down the field into the passing game. If you don't believe that you should be concerned about his accuracy, PFF gave him a 58.0 grade as a passing grade. They gave him an intermediate passing grade of 72.5 and a deep accuracy grade of 58.8. They also gave him a pressure grade of 48.6. Honestly, Trey Lynch is just one of those guys where you're, you're going to get lucky and he's going to be spectacular or he's just not going to translate into the NFL at all. Now, as the cons, they say that it's hard to find any anticipatory throws on tape. He's very hesitant to let the ball rip because he knows that he can run. 
And this is what I was just talking about. With a guy like Trey Lance, he's going to take the ball off uh, with his legs and scramble and pick up the yardage rather than kind of waiting and letting the play develop. He also averaged just 18 pass attempts per game in 2019. They also said that he had some of the worst ball placement numbers among the top quarterbacks. And again, accuracy is an issue. I do like Trey Lance if the Patriots drafted him. I wouldn't necessarily love it. He's not my favorite guy, but I also wouldn't hate it. He does have potential, but there are just so many concerns, so many question marks for me, especially in the Patriots system. I just don't necessarily know how well he would translate. So definitely not my number one guy, definitely not my number two, but he does fall here at number three. Now, next up on this list is not going to be Trask, but it is going to be our boy in Kellen Mond. Now, PFF tried to say that he was a fifth round projected quarterback. Obviously, that's not going to happen. When doing my mock drafts, I've seen him go anywhere between the second to third round because he just continues to rise on draft boards. In 2020, he had an overall grade of 81.7. 2019, he had an overall grade of 76.7. 2018, had a grade of 78.0. Another good build at the quarterback position, 6 foot 3, 217 pounds, and played at a college team with, of course, very good competition. So making that trans transition to the NFL shouldn't be too too hard. Of course, he did play at Texas A&M for those of you who do not know. Now, he is still a quarterback that has potential, but he's definitely not as dynamic as the top 5 guys that are projected to go in the first round. He didn't even average Eight yards per throw throughout any of his years in college. In 2020, he averaged 7.7, 7, 2019, 6.9, and 2018, 7.3. He had 20, or not 20, 19 touchdowns on three interceptions with a passer rating of 103.6 in 2020. He had a, or rather, he threw 20 touchdowns on nine interceptions in 2019 with a passer rating of 88.8. And in 2018, he threw 24 interceptions, 24 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, with a pass rating of 89.7. They gave him a passing grade of 81.3, an intermediate grade of 78.2, and a deep grade of 78.2 also, with a no pressure grade of 89.1, which is just spectacular. Now, he's going to be your quarterback that is kind of in the middle, you know? He's good at accuracy, he's good at being a mobile quarterback. But there's nothing that really sparks you. He's not elite at anything, but he's not terrible at anything. He doesn't have spectacular arm strength like a Trey Lance. You know, it's not going to necessarily wow anybody, but he does still have decent arm strength. And they said that he has about average accuracy to, at best, slightly above average, but still better than Trey Lance. PFF says that he's able to play on the move and his accuracy does not suffer once he gets outside the pocket. He also played in a pro style concept in Jimbo Fisher's offense that gave him a chance to showcase those NFL skills. He also was the NF or not the NFL, but the MVP of the senior bowl. He continues to improve his pocket presence over his career as he avoided sacks very well in 2020, and he is one of the most experienced quarterbacks in this class with a total of 1,548 career dropbacks. Now, a couple more cons is that they do say he is inconsistent with anticipation and timing when it comes to the middle of the field, and they don't feel that he made too many air quote, special throws on tape and that he rarely attacked deep down the field. That's not something that worries me because the Patriots aren't really a deep attacking offense anyway. Now, obviously, Kellen Mond isn't going to be a guy you select in the first round. I heard somebody say, you know, select him in the first round at 15 and even trade down in the first and then select him. No, 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 no. You do not select Kellen Mond in the first. And if someone does, good for them because no one else was going to do that. I, you just don't select Kellen Mond in the first, uh, but if you want to select him in the second um, or the third, that's probably around where he's going to go. Overall, with Kellen Mond, I just think you're going to get a more consistent quarterback um, than the next guy we're going to talk about in Kyle Trask. Now, I don't hate Kyle Trask, uh, but he just he was never above Kellen Mond on my board. And maybe I got into the process a little bit later as I was very high on scouting the, the top five quarterbacks at first, but I'm not as high on Kyle Trask as some people are, 
but I do believe that he could still be a decent quarterback, and, you know, I wouldn't hate to see the Patriots draft him, but he definitely is my number five guy on this list for a reason. He had a good 2020 season, and essentially, that is why people are talking about Kyle Trask, I think, as much as they are. He had a 2020 grade of 92.2, but then you get to 2019, he had a grade of 69.9 and a 2018 grade of 64.7. So he definitely is getting better each year as time goes on, but there's a big, big drop off between 2020 and then compared to his 2019 to 2018 grades. A very, very good sized quarterback, six foot five, 240 pounds. This guy is a monster. He's projected to go in the second round, and they say that Trask lit up defenses, but he lacks, uh, but he lacks real high-end traits. It's worrisome uh, how that will look with a lesser situation. And this is just one of those things I don't understand because so many people have gotten on Mac Jones saying, "Well, you know, he's just a product of the offense, and he's just a product of his of his weapons." But nobody is saying that about. Kyle Trask for some reason. I, I I just I don't understand it. Even when Mac Jones has proven to have better natural and raw abilities than Kyle Trask. But Kyle Trask, let's remember, played in the same system as Kadarius Tony and Kyle Pitts. One of those guys is projected to be a top five pick, and the other is projected to be a first round pick. Why nobody wants to talk about it, that's beyond me. Now I wouldn't say that Trask is elite at taking care of the ball, but he's also not terrible. He threw 40 or 43 touchdowns in 2020 with eight interceptions with a passer rating of 125.2, a completion grade of 68.7, threw about 4,278 yards. 2019, he threw a lot less in 2,941 yards, 66.8 completion percentage with 25 touchdowns, seven interceptions, 107.5 passer rating. In 2018, He had a passer rating of 63.6, 162 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions, 109 or 100.9 passer rating. They say that he's really good in maneuvering in the pocket. That's his biggest strength, but his biggest weakness is his mobility. This is another guy who's not going to be mobile. They say that he took an incredible year to year improvement. Like I did say, I think each year he did improve, but I wouldn't necessarily say he made spectacular improvements year to year. I mean, 2019 to 2020, sure, but 2018 to 2019, I wouldn't say that's spectacular. They say he's fearless in tight pockets, almost too oblivious to pressure at times. That's... They, they, they list that as a pro, but that's kind of a concern for me just because if he's, you know, too fearless and oblivious to pressure, then couldn't that just result in more strip sacks? They also said that he was far more willing to take shots down the field in 2020 compared to past years and did put some special throws on his tape and has multiple speeds already, can throw a fastball or lay one in with touch. Now, he's somebody that I don't think is going to give you what Mac Jones can do in the pocket in the sense of, yeah, both of those guys are not mobile, but at least Mac Jones can maneuver in the pocket, can, you know, shake off sacks, get outside the numbers. They say that Kyle Trask is a statue in the pocket, no scrambling or playmaking ability at all. They also say that he's very inconsistent ball placement underneath, 67.4 accuracy on throws inside 10 yards, which ranked 50th. Like I said, he also had a loaded Florida offense, and when he played in the Senior Bowl, he struggled a lot without his top two playmakers. And he has solid arm strength, but it's nowhere near all these other guys in his draft class. So these are my top five guys that I wouldn't mind seeing the Patriots go after. Uh, obviously, I think this list, in my own personal opinion, is very accurate. It's a very good list. And um, I want to know what you guys think. I know a lot of people will probably have Trey Lance over uh, Mac Jones, but I just I can't see it. I tried and I just don't see it. Before we end this one off, though, I do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, BetOnline.ag. Now, BetOnline has the fastest and easiest ways to bet on all of your sports action. Football might be over, but NBA, college basketball, and the NHL are still a full swing. BetOnline even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV, along with real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. 
BetOnline also has you covered for all of the new scores and odds, and it is the best way to place your bets, and it's completely free to sign up. All you guys got to do is head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. But don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get in with the action. And don't forget to use that promo code CLNS50 to receive a 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. This has been online, your online sportsbook experts. Now, like always, guys, I do appreciate you for watching this video. I hope we could give some perspective on five guys I think the Patriots could potentially target in this draft, along with what order I hope that they would uh, kind of prioritize these guys. What are your thoughts, though? Let me know in the comment section below. Like always, I appreciate each and every single one of you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.